What's happening, fam? LAR movement still moving. Book is entitled Lessons from a Non-Custodial Father at Amazon Kindle and Create Space. A link will be in the description box below as usual. This video is entitled Be Careful Judging Black Masculinity. I'm making this video because a lot of times you see people who aren't black men have their view of what black manhood and black masculinity is. But y'all don't speak to black men. You know, you spend more time ignoring black men's perspectives, ideas, ideologies, and our journey from, from, uh, from boyhood to manhood that you think your opinion of, of what our manhood and masculinity is trumps what it is with us. You think, you know, a lot of people think their opinion of black masculinity trumps black men's opinion of black masculinity or black manhood. And it's weird because most of the, everybody really does it. But the thing about it is, is you, y'all couldn't handle being in our shoes. So you're, you're, so a bunch of parakeets trying to tell these sharks about swimming. And we really ignore a lot of times, a lot of you people, because we know y'all don't know what y'all talking about. And we know, you know, y'all judging us through your twisted lens. You know, like we know black man is America's boogeyman. Now, ironically, if you look at American history, should we be the boogeyman? Absolutely not. But if we're the boogeyman, then, then we become, um, then everybody agrees that they can dump their evil, their, 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 their things that they are evil about themselves, they can project that onto us because everybody else does it. You know, everybody's in agreement with that. You know, white society projects their evil onto us. Uh, Non-white society projects their evil onto us. The gay community projects their evil onto us. Our women projects their evil onto us. You know, they teach the kids to project, to, to project evil onto us. You know, and it's, it's ironic to say the least that even when people are judging us, they're judging us by a standard that isn't us. You know? Like, people judge us through a white standard. You know, that's why it's all this white and black, white and black, you know? Demographic things. But the thing about it is, you ask a black man, black men don't want to be white. Black men don't, don't, don't even... Uh, white masculinity and white manhood... We don't even operate in that in that in that framework, and then you should be more like no, we shouldn't. You, do you ask Asian men should they, why they should be more like white men, or Hispanic men why they should be more like white men? You know what I'm saying? Samoan men why you should be more like no, Native American men why you should be more like white men because it's already a common sense that you know different groups of men are different. You know we we're, we're the same as far as men is concerned. But we, the, the ways we operate is different. And we don't care to be judged by a white standard. Or we don't care to be judged by a white standard through a non-white person's eyes how they should feel like we should be. It's like, be careful with that. Because when we start judging, because when we turn the tables and say, okay, they say black men aren't cutthroat enough. Y'all not, you know, y'all not aggressive enough. It's funny how we're not cutthroat enough and aggressive enough, but at the same time, everybody's scared of us. You know, when we do something, it's, it's, it's magnified 10, 15, 100 fold. Because the image that we, we... So how, if we're not cutthroat enough, but if we do something with the evilest things in the world, how do those two things equate? They don't. You know? Black men need to be more confident. Oh, oh, but you black men are too arrogant. See, a lot of y'all are confused. Think y'all gonna confuse us, and we like, we we really don't pay attention to a lot of you people who aren't black men talking about our masculinity because we know y'all full of it. You know. Um. <laughs> you want a rebellious black man. 
I need you to be rebellious. That's why, you know, drug dealers are so attractive. But then, all black men are drug dealers and they're the criminals and the scourge of the earth. Like, do you hear yourself? I mean, do you really hear yourself? That's attractive. We should be that because it's attractive to you, but we should, we should you know, be shot because of, it, because of it too. But nobody says, you know, white gangsters or white drug dealers are attractive. Nobody says cartel, you know, Hispanic cartels are attractive. Men, you know, uh, the Asian Yakuza mafia gangsters are attractive. Like, it's like it doesn't even, it doesn't equate. Like, so we, that's why we say, you know, you got to be careful judging us with this nonsense. You have, um, like, even the gay community. Black men are homophobic. Black men don't care. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, if you, we tell you, we don't care. We like, you know, heterosexual black men, which is the majority, the vast majority of black men. We like women. We don't give a shit about you being gay. Because we ain't trying to talk to you. That's just how simple it is. But because we're not trying to talk to you, we're homophobic. No, truth be told, we just don't bother with you because you're not, we don't, we don't fuck with you like that. Like, there's no reason to, to date <laughs> if we don't date the same sex. So everything that goes along with it, if you're trying to make yourself seen, it's like, yeah, get out of my face. You intruding on my personal space, not the other way around. You know, um, our women, you know. View our masculinity in, in weird ways And we just looking at them like they nuts You know I, I need you to be a man like I as a woman would, would, would like a man to be Like That ain't manhood That ain't our manhood at all Like We're not judging our manhood by how you think we should be as men Y'all you know You don't judge You know Do you judge your femininity By how we say you should be as women No you don't You know You don't because we have a lot of issues with, with, with your femininity, but, you know, that's what it is. Now, why I say be careful judging it is because the very things that a lot of you, you, you people project on us is the very things that you guys participate in completely. And you don't judge yourself by these same standards. And what happens is... You blame us for you doing stuff that you got no business doing. You know, and, and people got to think about that because we, we like black masculinity when it's viewed from everybody else is either it is, is in everybody's eyes, either superhero or super villain. And you could pretty much be both. You know what I'm saying? Because nobody wants you know, everybody wants to say how successful they are, but in American society, we as black men do the most with the least. We have the most the, the most obstacles to face. You know, a lot of everybody else gets we either a buffer class for you to not deal with America's uh, racism or, 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 or stereotypes or oppression or, or, or whatever it is. Or, or we're the scapegoat, so so you so people won't look at you and your shenanigans. You know, nobody's uh, nobody really is up for examination in this country. You know, we we're always and our exam keeps cha keeps changing and changing and changing. You know, and people look up 10, 20 years. How did this happen? How did this happen? Because you spent so much time watching us, you ignored what was right in front of your face. You know, just like, you know, uh, uh, you know, recently we, they talk about black men not building. That's a new argument. That's a new standard that was just changed. You know. Now we're not men because we, we don't build and we don't provide, we don't protect. Wait, well, when did that start? Did, did, did the push for us to build and protect and provide start in the 60s? Was that, was that when that argument came out? 70s? Was that when that came out? 80s? Was that when they came out? 90s? Was that when they came out? 2000s? Was that when they came out? 2010? You know, was that when they came out? No, maybe three to five years ago. So now, 
you know, it's something brand new because now we look through a new lens, you know, um, you know, and, and even when we talk about, you know, black fathers, you know, our kids are taught to look at us through a paradigm of, you know, uh, Whatever we do, that's what we're supposed to do, and, it, and what we do is nothing. And everything we do is nothing. Nothing should be appreciated. You know, same thing. And then, but ironically, you know, for, for, for the people who have, for the mothers and families and, and people who know black boys who, who aren't black, they, they realize the world that they're sending them out into. They realize this. Because they participate in making this an a, a adverse environment for us to be in. And then, but you can't tell your sons, your, your nieces, your nephews, your cousins, your friends, that your uh, perspective of black masculinity or manhood works. It's going to work for them because you, re- you know it only works for you. You know? To the point where I'm going to say this and I'm going to end it In the last Five Maybe ten years couple, No a couple of years Like people You know I, I heard the Issa Rae thing Say she wanted to To, 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 to put uh, what, what is it Toxic masculinity on display Men don't <laughs> How is it That a woman can make a show with the basis of putting toxic masculinity on display. Overlooking all of the toxic, overlooking at the foundation of what she wrote when it's, when it's put out publicly shows how toxic her ideologies of women is. See what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you, you, when you project be careful when you judge our masculinity because when you're judging it from your perspective, it ignores all of your BS. But what winds up happening is people are so comfortable judging us and projecting onto us their, their ways that when they actually put, when they think they're putting us on front street using, using how they interact with us as a muse, what winds up happening is you start to see how off these people are. This is this is why society is the way it is. You know, <sighs> he had no business doing that. He had no business. He had no business walking. What was he doing? Breathing. Oh my God! Was he drinking? He was drinking water. He deserved to die. What kind of water was it? Was it spring water? If he was drinking distilled, this wouldn't have happened. Like you start to see people, like um, you 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 get to see all of these groups and how they jump. To things that don't make sense. So you see people viewing white people like, yeah, you 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 have no like that makes no sense. And you see Hispanics that makes no sense. Interact with us. You see Asians that makes no sense. You see you you know uh, you see other immigrants that makes no sense. You see the LG the gay community it makes no sense. You see the women interact with us it makes no sense. You see the children interact with us you make it makes no sense. And then everybody says well it's got to be your fault because at the end of the day y'all take it. Which I can, I, I, I can understand that But on the flip side of that When we say I'm done with this nonsense Then everybody becomes a victim You know what I'm saying So it's like we, you, You're talking about You know you, You're talking about people wanting to judge Our masculinity On On a manipulative opportuni- From a manipulative Opportunistic viewpoint And then You know Make us the super villain in that way But then We need to be the group That's the superheroes To come save everybody When everybody else in society Gets all the advantages and privileges From us being the buffer class And They don't Lift a finger to change that or help us, and it's weird because at the end of the day, when it all when it's all said and done, everybody expects us to be to come and save them, and then they're mad when we don't. We're mad when we won't speak for you. When people say "hold your own nuts," all of a sudden everybody, why? Well, 
your manhood or womanhood should be by your standards is far greater than mine so why do you need my help remember like i'm beneath all of y'all remember so if i'm beneath y'all and y'all so much smarter and better and smarter when things go left you should be able to handle this right i shouldn't have to you know be the, i can't be the bane of your existence and your and, and your god that makes no sense uh so we out peace